I want to talk today about energy and its different types. Uh, first of all, I want to make a generalization. Linnea, in general, a force in the same direction of motion, like F1 here, so if this box is moving to the right, a force in that direction, we call that positive work. A force in the opposite direction of motion, like friction, we call that negative work. We call that negative work. Uh, little note, although work can be positive or negative, it's not a vector, has no direction. So what does negative work actually mean? We're going to talk about that today, but I need to give you some definitions and some explanations. Energy. Energy is the ability to do work. And since work is force times distance, if you have energy, you have the ability to exert a force over a given distance. I need to terrify Thomas. Thomas, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to put you in peril, but I promise I won't hurt you. So. Here's my bowling ball. If I hold this over Thomas's head, and now we're going to do a thought experiment, if I were to drop this, would it apply a force over a distance when it hit Thomas's head? Say yes. Would it do work? Say yes. Yeah. Does it have energy? Yes. Now here's the question. Look up. More energy or less energy? Would it apply a bigger force or a smaller force when it hit his head? So. The equation for energy, at least part of it, might have a height, might have an h in it. And it might have a m in it. Because he wouldn't have been so nervous if instead of a bowling ball, I was using a tennis ball. Right? Right. OK? Energy is the ability to do work. Except there are many, 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 many different types of energy. There are many different types of energy. Some that we're going to be looking at well, one of them is the energy of motion. If that bowling ball is moving, the reason it applies a force over a distance when it hits Thomas's head is because it's moving. We have a special name for the energy of motion. We call it kinetic energy. We're going to give you an equation for that one. And that one is going to explain an awful lot. Another form of energy is heat. Typically, heat is created by friction. In fact, technically, it's the work done by friction, which means it's the force of friction times distance. We did do one like that a couple of days ago. Gravitational potential energy. This is energy due to an object's height. Now, the word potential energy means stored energy. So when I raised that bowling ball even higher above Thomas, what I was really doing was storing extra energy in that bowling ball, but it was only potential energy because it was stored. It wasn't doing anything yet. It was not doing work. It was not applying a force over a distance, but it could have. There's also potential energy in chemicals, chemical potential energy, gunpowder being a great example of that. Or uh, the chemical energy in the food that you eat. That's also stored energy. That's why you have to eat food. Other types. Well, sound is a form of energy. Uh, there's something called elastic energy. When you stretch a rubber band, you do a uh, force over a distance. You've just stored energy in the rubber band. If you let the rubber band go, it can apply a force over a distance. And you can have it all snap at once. Or you've seen those little toy airplanes where you can store the energy in the rubber band and then spread that energy out over a long time by turning the propeller. <coughs> Nuclear energy, that's the energy stored within the nucleus of an atom. And lots of others. In this course, we're going to look at Mechanical energy, which is broken down into two main types. The energy of motion, what did I call that one? Kinetic. And potential energy, usually gravitational potential energy. Not always. And remember, potential energy is just stored energy. This concept, the fact that energy is the ability to do work, this actually Ange explains negative work. 
When you do negative work on an object, what we're really saying is the object is losing energy. When you do positive work on an object, that object has gained energy. Let's talk about, for example, kinetic energy. When you make an energy speed up, it's gaining kinetic energy. When you make an object slow down, it's losing kinetic energy. And if we tried to solve for that, we'd probably get a negative. Not a direction, just how much? A loss. There's a video, I'm going to show you the video another time. I want to show you a couple other videos and give you some time to work on the homework. So let's look at potential energy. Potential energy is stored energy. There are many types. A great way to store energy, a classic energy storage device that's several thousand years old, is the bow and arrow. Supposing it takes 250 newtons of force to pull the arrow back 0.78 meters. How many joules of energy are stored in the bow? Hmm. Patrick, what does this question want me to find? Hmm. What's this 250 here? What's this here? Ooh, there was an equation that gave us joules and involved a force and a distance. The work equation. Work equals force times distance. It's going to be 250 times 0.78, which is what? Hundred and ninety-five joules? And that energy left your body. In fact, you lost 195 joules of energy, probably food energy, calories, and it's stored temporarily in the bow. When you let go of the bow, where does that energy get transferred to? What type of energy the arrow, what type of energy does it turn into? Kinetic. Okay? What happens to the stored energy? turns into kinetic. It's really the same physics as my toy Nerf dart gun. I apply a force over a distance to cock it. I have just stored energy in here. Now, this is not stored the way a bow does. I think it stores it with air compression. It might be a spring. I've never taken it apart. But right now, there is stored energy. When I pull the trigger, when I pull the trigger, it turns into kinetic. I've actually worked out the efficiency of my Nerf dart gun. It's terrible. This thing's only about 8% efficient. Most of the energy is wasted. Most of that force times distance. Could you hear it? It goes into sound. And there's a lot of friction in here. Yeah, I actually figured that out. Put your pencils down, look up. Yeah, turn the page. Again, Taylor, all potential energy means is stored energy. When you stretch a rubber band and hold it there, you have stored potential energy. This battery has stored potential electrical energy. When I put this battery into a circuit, the energy slowly drains from it, but right now it's stored. However, in this unit, we're going to look at one specific type of potential energy. Most of the time, we're going to be looking at gravitational potential energy. This is the work that you must do against gravity in order to increase an object's height. As an equation, my abbreviation for potential energy, come on, not responding. My abbreviation for potential energy is PE. You know what my abbreviation for kinetic energy is? KE. You've seen this before, but I called it something else. I just called it the work done against gravity. It's MGH. Can you see the force times distance hidden in that equation? Mg, gravitational force, distance. What you're really calculating when you calculate how much work it took to climb a flight of stairs or how much work it took to lift an object up, you're actually asking, how much energy did I pass from myself or from the machine or from the crane to that object. That object picked up some extra stored energy because if I drop it, it's going to do more damage than if I dropped it when it was right on the ground. 
Oh, uh, or if you know the weight of the object in newtons, potential energy is just the force of gravity times height because weight is mg. Grab it. You know what? I missed a T there, didn't I? Gravita no, got it. Gravita I had an extra T. There we go. Gravitational. Spelled that wrong. Fixed it. Stickiness. I know. Um, Patrick, you're playing basketball. I saw with the juniors, coach was having them do skip and rope and conditioning. Is he doing that with you guys too? Okay. Why does it tire you out? First of all, skipping faster tires you out more. That's the power aspect of things. But why does even jumping once tire you out? So instead of Jaden, let's put Patrick. That's probably not your mass. I just made up a number, but that's okay. First of all, what's, Patrick weight? what's Patrick's weight? No now. What's another word for weight? Or what's another expression for weight? When I say weight, I don't mean mass. What do I mean? Which is on your green formula sheet. So let's find his FG, which is going to be MG 75 times 9.8. I can do this in my head. 75 times 10 is 750. It's going to be 750 minus 15. 735? Yes. Units, it's a force. Newtons. That's your weight. OK. When? Patrick jumps, he can raise his center of mass 75 centimeters from the ground. At the top of his jump, how much potential energy does he possess? So potential energy is mgh. I think I said this. If I didn't, I'll repeat myself just in case. Uh, potential energy, that equation is on your formula sheet. In fact, I think it's right next to the power equation, I think. I think it goes work equals force times distance, power equals work over time, and I think it says uh, an equation for potential energy, and you'll also see like, an equation for kinetic energy, which is preview of coming attraction. Uh, you know what, Patrick? Instead of going mg, I'm just going to go 735, because that is mg. Uh, your, the height that you jump to is not 75. 0.75, not 0, just 0.75. Trust me, I've seen you jump. You, I don't know if you can jump this high, but you can jump higher than 0 0.075. Even I can jump higher than 0 0.075. How many joules of energy does he have stored at the top of his jump? At the top of your jump, you have gained energy. Where did that energy come from? Came from, really, it came from the energy stored in your muscles, which is the energy that you get from food. This is why jumping up and down, first of all, does tire you out. Oh, and then if you want to really get tired fast, jump up and down faster, do this work faster, then the power equation comes in because now you've made time a factor. But even jumping once does take energy. Having said that, I could probably ask every one of you once to jump as high as you could right now, and there'd be no effects. You wouldn't be panting. You wouldn't be sweaty. Once, you'd be fine. But if I said do this 30 times in a row, Oh, you're getting, starting to get tired. Your heart rate goes up. You're burning a lot of energy because that energy's got to come from somewhere. One of the themes you're going to hear me start repeating myself for the next couple of days is energy doesn't magically come into being. It's got to come from somewhere. Example three is meant to be a Captain Obvious question. How much potential energy does an object have if it's on the ground? Zero. Why? What's its height? Zero. And so what's anything times zero? zero? So if H is zero, what's MG zero? That's going to be handy. You may be looking at a situation, and the question looks really complicated, but if, one of the th if at one point you're on the ground, you can cross out the potential energy there. <laughs> Kinetic energy, which was the energy of, looking for a word that means letter M, motion. motion. Any object that's moving has kinetic energy because to bring it to a stop, whatever it hits will need, uh, feel a force over a distance. The equation for kinetic energy, my abbreviation is KE. I'd love to derive it, but we're running out of time. I'm just going to give it to you. It's a half mv squared. 
And do you know what all of these terms mean? What does a lowercase m stand for in our physics? It's mass. What does v stand for? I've got to be fussy. We're in scalarville, so not velocity, but it's technically speed, which means direction's going to be irrelevant. Thank you. Pause for one second. So normally I'd write over on the right what each of these are, but I think you know this. M, mass, V, speed. Don't forget the squared. Oh, and how will I type a one half on my calculator? I won't type a one half, but I'll type instead. Yeah, 0.5, okay. So let's crunch some numbers here. Uh, I looked this up. These numbers are reasonably accurate. A 357 Magnum bullet weighs 8.1 grams, and it travels at 490 meters per second. How much kinetic energy does it possess? Kinetic energy is a half m v squared. 0.5. What's the mass? Be careful. Don't say 8.1. Why can't I use 8.1? We don't do physics with grams. So 8.1 grams, how many kilograms? I think two zeros and then 8.1. Yes, when you divide by 1,000. So uh, 0 0.0081, and then 490, don't forget the squared. Make sure you know where the squared button is on your calculator. You're going to be using it an awful lot this unit. What do you get? You get 972. Point blah, 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 972. 972 joules of energy. A car has a mass of 1,000 kilograms. How much kinetic energy is required to reach a speed of 5 meters per second? By the way, really what we're asking is how much gasoline would you need to burn because the energy is coming from your gasoline. Okay. Kinetic energy equals a half mv squared. It's going to be 0.5 times 1,000 times 5 squared. Oh, I can do this in my head. 5 squared is 25. It's going to be 25,000, half of 25,000. Double check me. Do you get 12,500? Yes? Units, energy. Units, energy. Joules. Yeah, because energy is the ability to do work, and work is joules. Brian, how fast are we going in part B? Twice as fast? Oh, probably twice as much energy, right? Let's crunch the numbers and see. Kinetic energy is going to be a half 1,000, 10 squared. You get 25,000, right? Twice as fast, twice as the energy, right? Or do you? What do you get? 50, really? Huh. Brian, how fast are we going in part C? Three times as fast? Shouldn't that be three times as much? Well, look, you know, let's, let's find out. It's going to be 0. 0.5 times 1,000 times 15 squared. Thomas went, ooh, what'd you get? No. I think 112,500, yes? Probably missed the squared, because that never happens. Don't turn the page yet. This is kind of weird. Twice as fast, why doesn't, hmm. Do me a favor, do me a favor, do me a favor. On your calculator, can you go 50,000 divided by 12,500? What do you get? So B is, Four times larger than part A? Do me a favor, do me a favor, do me a favor. Uh, can you go 112,500 divided by 12,500? What do you get? Yes. Sorry, oh, oh the number nine? Yeah. Really? Hmm. Luke, what's the equation for kinetic energy? V 
V what? V what? V what? One more time, loud and proud. V what? That squared, although I've just introduced it to you, dominates your life. You just didn't realize it. That squared means to go twice as fast. What's two squared? Four times more energy. To go three times as fast, what's three squared? Nine times more energy. To go four times as fast, talk to me. 16 times more energy. To go five times as fast, okay? Many of you will soon be paying for your own gasoline, okay? If you're going twice as fast, you're speeding by twice as much, you get half the gas mileage, you're burning through the gas like crazy. If you're really speeding and you're going three times over the speed limit, you're using nine times more gasoline than you normally would. Your, your gas bill is gonna be pretty heavy. Most modern cars have a little green light or something that appears on the dash when you're in the economy range. If you're someone who likes to floor it and slow down, floor it and slow down, floor it and slow down, this squared comes back to haunt you there like crazy. Or this also explains a lot about car accidents. Let's suppose you're in a car accident at 80 kilometers per hour and you're in a car accident at 20 kilometers per hour. 20 is four times slower or 80 is four times faster. What's four squared? The people in the 80 kilometer per hour crash will suffer 16 times more damage. Not four times more damage, 16 times more damage which is why 80 kilometer per hour crashes and 100 kilometer per hour crashes are so devastating. And a 20 kilometer per hour crash, eh, you might have whiplash, probably not even that. You'll probably just get a bruise and you're fine. Example six, turn the page. Suppose an object has a kinetic energy of 5,000 joules. How much kinetic energy is required to double its speed? How much kinetic energy is required to double its speed? What's on the V, Luke? In your head, four times 5,000. Yep. How much kinetic energy is required to triple its speed? Forty-five thousand? Yes. So once you're paying for your own gas, by the way, and I'm mostly talking to guys because they're the stupid drivers, but once you're paying for your own gas, you better decide whether it's worth it to speed or not. It's really not. You're burning gas like crazy, and unless you're on the freeway, you're hitting traffic lights all the time, and everyone who was going slower, you catches up anyhow. What if I want to quadruple my speed? 16. Eighty thousand? Yeah. That squared right there explains why sports equipment like golf clubs, tennis rackets, hockey sticks, anything that you strike another object with, it's become lighter, not heavier. Now you might think, wait a minute, if it's heavier, the object will go further because it's got more mass when they collide. Momentum has mass in it. Yes, it does. But rather than look at it in terms of momentum, we look at it in terms of energy transfer. Luke, what's on the letter V? If I get a lighter club, but I can improve my velocity, because there's a squared, I get way more bang for my buck. The reason golf clubs have become lighter, not heavier, is because of, heck, in golf, we talk about club head speed. If I can swing the club twice as fast, the golf ball is going to go four times as far. Not twice as far. So even though it's a bit of a trade-off, because if it's lighter, yes, the mass is also part of the equation, that squared on the V is well worth uh, for focusing your efforts on in sports. This explains why it's more difficult to speed up once you already have kinetic energy. If you're bike riding, it's pretty easy to go from zero to five. It's tougher to go from five meters per second to 10 meters per second, even though that's the same increase, five, because that's squared. Oh, and it's even tougher to go from 10 meters per second to 15 meters per second. It's not three times tougher, it's nine times tougher. It's gonna be really tiring. 
because of that squared. This explains why damage to occupants in car accidents is so dramatically different between an accident at 20 kilometers per hour and an accident at 80 kilometers per hour. 80 kilometers per hour will experience 16 times more damage. The difference between 20 and 100, the people doing 100, 25 times more damage. Example 7. Connor, what does example 7 want me to find? Yeah, and I picked my words carefully. I didn't say find the v v v velocity. That would be all that stuff from the beginning of the year, VF and VI and all that. Just how fast. And I noticed they gave me a kinetic energy. I think my first approach is going to be to write down the kinetic energy equation, a half mv squared. Connor, what did you say they want me to find? What letter is that in this equation? I want to get the v by itself. Don't memorize this. We'll derive it. Here is yet another equation. How am I going to get the v by itself? Well, first of all, Connor, on this side, what's going to just stay where it is? What's going to drop down like a domino? OK, look up. On this side, what's just going to stay where it is? What's going to drop down like a domino? The kinetic energy, right? Because I'm trying to get the v by itself, so it doesn't go anywhere. Let's write it down. Kathunk. And let's put our equal sign there. Connor, what's the m doing to the v squared? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? How will I move it over? Yes? What's the 1 on top of the fraction doing? I don't care. It's a 1 because <coughs> dividing and timesing by 1 doesn't change anything. What's this, where is this 2 on the top or the bottom of the fraction? Which means it's dividing. So how will I move the 2 over? That would give me Connor v squared. Everybody, all together, how do I get rid of a squared? Square yeah, good review, right? There's yet another equation for v. Don't memorize it. Yeah. Do you put like the point five? On the bottom, too? Yeah, I just don't like having a decimal inside of a fraction. That's bad math manners. Right. It's not wrong. It's just like it's not wrong to walk around with something hanging from your nose. Yeah. Just no law against it, but I have good math manners. Connor, are you okay with that? I think that makes sense, yeah? So let's uh, crunch it. It's going to be the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass, and then square root that answer. I cooked the numbers to make these work out evenly, I think. What do you get? Sorry? 8.6. It's not repeating, right? It, it, like it ends? Yeah, what I meant by makes a, make up even, I, it's not a yucky decimal. Okay. 8.6 what? Meters per second. I think I mentioned to you that energy is the physics of roller coasters. I'm nuts about roller coasters. So a 350 kilogram roller coaster has a kinetic energy of 137,200 joules at the bottom of the first hill. Cool. Mike, how fast? Oh, sorry, Mike, how fast? Mike, what's A asking me to find? So really quickly, just for practice, let's rederive the equation. It's a half mv squared. The ke just drops down like a domino. You would, I like to times by 2, Patrick, divide by m, and then square root to get the v by itself. Uh, in Physics 12, we do go to Playland, and we do go on rides with instruments and things. And one of the things we calculate is how fast you're going at the bottom of the first hill of the roller coaster. And this is how we calculate it. It's going to be the square root of 2 times 137,200 divided by 350. What do you get? Sorry? 28 units? Is that fast? You know what? Uh, convert that to kilometers per hour, which I, uh, times by 3.6, yes? How fast are we? Oh, that's not bad. Right, that's freeway speed. That's a, pr that's a pretty good roller coaster. There are coasters that go faster. Uh, 100 kilometers per hour is about 60 miles an hour. I know there are roller coasters that kiss up to 100 miles per hour. Um, but 
this would get your attention. The Playland coaster does not go this fast. Okay. You'd be making noise at the bottom of this first hill. You'd be experiencing a big changing normal force while on that first hill, and that would also get your attention. I showed you that video all those months ago of the kid on their first roller coaster ride. B, let's suppose you're an engineer. You're designing this ride, and at the bottom of the first hill, you want people to be going 28 meters per second. How high do you have to build that first hill? If all of the kinetic energy came from potential energy, how high is that first hill? Mobin, can you read this out loud to me again, please? Stop. Keep reading. Stop. That's really what that sentence is telling me. If all of my kinetic energy came from the potential energy, if they were equal to each other. Um, oh, uh, Mobin, how much kinetic energy do we have from part, well, from the top there? And Mobin, what was the equation for potential energy? We threw it in a box a couple of pages earlier. You might remember it. That's the, if, uh, there's another one that we put in the box a little higher, I think. Did we not? No, same box. Yeah, because I don't know FG, right? Here. Mobin, what did you say they're asking me to find? How would I get the H by itself? What do I do with the M and the G? Yeah. And this is what ride engineers do. It's going to be, oh, can I be lazy, folks? Look up, look up. I don't want to rewrite this. Do you mind? Can I go boom and just put the MG like that? That's good enough work, I think. Yes. Uh, so it's going to be 137,200 divided by 350 is the mass. 9.8 is G. Is this a fraction? Yeah. Is there more than one thing on the top? No. Is there more than one thing on the bottom? Yeah. Better put the bottom in brackets. How high must this hill be? 40 even? Now, at Playland, what we'll actually do is we'll reverse this. We'll measure the height of the first hill. And if you know the height of the first hill, you can figure out how much energy you have. And then you can work your way back and figure out how fast you're going at the bottom of the first hill. You can even get good enough to do it while you're standing in line. I would like to suggest to you that calculating how fast you'll be going at the bottom of the first hill just adds to the excitement of standing in line for a roller coaster. I'm telling you, it does. It does. Jenna, what's example nine want me to find? How high would we, yep. Yeah, if we were lifting an object to give it a potential energy of that, you know what? I think we're gonna write our gravitational potential energy equation, M. G, H. What did you say this question wants me to find, Jenna? How would I get the H by itself? Can I just do that? Yet another equation. Yet again, please don't memorize it. So the height is going to be 15288 divided by 65. 9.8. Which is what? Sorry? 24? Is that right? Uh, units, Jenna? Height? Yeah. Okay. Where else might we use this? Oh, in engineering. Suppose you're an engineering firm, and you have a pile driver, and you need, and you're not on your phone or anything foolish like that. That would be foolish. Face down. You're not that important. And you've run the numbers. You're trying to drive a big pile, a big column into the ground, a big pole into the ground. And to get it into the ground at this particular hardness of ground, you need to hit the at 18 meters per second. OK. I'd like to know how high do I need to raise the pile driver so that it hits at 18 meters per second. It's a two-step process. The first part asks, Daniela, what's A asking me to find? Well, kinetic energy is a half m. V squared. 0.5, Daniela, what's the mass? 
And how much speed do we need when we hit the ground? And don't forget the square. By far the most common mistake, especially if it's a long, convoluted question. Kids are so proud of getting everything in the right place, they forget to write the squared or type it on, they write the squared, they forget to type it on their calculator because they're so proud. They got all the numbers in, ah, I'm done. And they forget that little bit. Believe me, it happens in my physics 12 too. What do you get? How much kinetic energy does it need? 405, three zeros. Okay. So that's how much energy I need when I hit this pylon with the pile driver. How high do I need to raise it? Because that's really what you'd like to know. When I design this crane, how high are we raising the pile driver? If all of the energy comes from the potential energy, what was that code for again, Mobin? What equation came from that phrase? Do you remember? What came from that? Thank you, Brian. And now I agree with you, Mobin. I can replace the KE with 405,000 and MGH. Daniela, how would I get the H by itself? Do you mind if I just do like that? Oh, also you'll notice if the pile driver is heavier, I don't need to raise it as high, which makes sense. If the pile driver it was lighter, I'd have to raise it higher to get the same oomph, which again, in hindsight, I think Lyndon kind of makes sense, but here's the explanation of the physics of why. Uh, H is going to be 405,000 divided by 2,500 times 9.8. You get 16.5 and some decimals, but 16.5 liters. Higher would be okay, because you'd have extra speed. But if you were somewhere and you couldn't raise it that high, maybe there was a tree in the way or something like that, you either got to cut down the tree or you got to get a heavier pile driver. A person is running at seven meters per second, if they have a kinetic energy of that much, what's their mass in kilograms? Huh. Taylor, what's this question asking me to find? And they've given me energy. You know what? I think a kinetic energy, I think I'm going to start out like this. Ke equals a half mv squared. But Taylor, which letter, what am I going to get by itself this time? M. What's the v, oh, first of all, what's going to stay where it is? What's just going to drop down? I think the Ke, yes? What's the V squared doing to the M? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Talk to me how to move it over. I agree. And I'm not worried about square rooting or anything here. I don't mind the square there. No problem. Um, how am I going to move the 1 over? Don't care. Where's the 2? On the bottom. So how am I going to move it over? And that's going to give me M. And again, sometimes kids think, don't I have to square root? No, there's no squared on the M. Straight plug and chug. The mass of this person is going to be 2 times 1764 divided by 7 squared. Sorry? 72 kilograms? So as always, anytime I give you a new equation, it's also, as far as I'm concerned, fair for me to give you the answer to the equation and have you find one of the things making up the equation. Go backwards. Um, let me just check which questions I skipped with my block Fs, and then I got a cool video to show you. With my block Fs, I skipped 9. I said 9, 9. See, I said 9 to 9. No? Not, no? Okay. And I skipped 16. But the rest, yeah. So what did I say? I skipped 9. Yoink. And I skipped 16. Um, about, oh, I got to pause the video because I can't put this one on YouTube. 